Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight ride of Paul Revere. On the 18th of April in 75, hardly a man is now alive who remembers that famous day and year. He said to his friend, if the British march by land or sea from the town tonight, hang a lantern aloft in the belfry arch of the North, Chow- North-, North Church Tower as a signal light. One if by land and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore shall be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. If you grew up a product of American schools, you probably are somewhat familiar with those words. You probably forgot about Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride. But you certainly remember hearing, the British are coming, the British are coming, the British are coming. But everybody in America, or most people in America in 1775 were British or of British descent, you know, at least in the colonies, you, you, the indigenous people who had been here, and you had the you know, Spanish who were uh, throughout most of the West and the and some of the South. You know, Florida was Spanish territory, and there's some French territory in Louisiana and, and that, but you know, Massachusetts, where Paul Revere would have been writing. Everybody was British, or just about everybody. So who cares if the British are coming? They're just leaving their house and going to dinner or what? And here's the thing. If you're going to sneak attack, maybe don't get caught riding through town sounding alarms. You kind of want to go through and whisper to people, hey, they're coming. Go get your guns. Mm. So let's talk about taking a second look at what we're taught, maybe thinking a little more critically. But first, we're brought to you by Amazon Books. We talk a lot about books on this podcast. In fact, if you go to jkwdpodcast.com slash books, you're going to see a list of over 200 books we've mentioned on this podcast through the years. And if you click on our link there and buy one from Amazon, it'll kick us a few cents. Support the show, keep the lights on, keep us in coffee because every want us 12 coffee. cents helps. That's right. <laughs> Let's be frank, you want us in coffee. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want this to be an uncaffeinated conversation. <laughs> Again, that's jkwdpodcast.com slash books. We're also brought to you by Vitamin K Daily. Get your daily dose of positive from the Prince of Positive himself. Kevin P. Ringgold Sr. Wake up to a little kick in the pants by having an awesome day, Monday through Friday, every day. Get yourself four weeks free by going to vitaminkdaily.com. After that, just $24.95 a year. If it turns out that it doesn't suit you, just cancel before your trial is up and you won't get charged at all. Again, that's vitaminkdaily.com. Get yourself four weeks free and let's do the show. Welcome to the Josh and Kelvin World Domination Podcast, where we talk about better humanhood and teach you how to dominate your world. Are you ready? I almost made it through the opening two stanzas of that. Uh, you did. I, I stumbled on that North Church, though. You did. North Church. <sighs> How are you still, doing? How are you doing, by the way? Something doing... about that ride. I'm doing good, thanks. Having fun. Got a cup full of coffee here. <clears throat> I waited until you were done your intro. And, um, you know, life's here in upstate New York. Got a little rain today. But for the most part, it's been a good week. It's, the temperatures have been up to, you know, as high as 70 this past week. Mostly dry. Got a couple of walks in. Feeling good. Feeling good. So, glad to be here. Good, good. How's about you? Good. <clears throat> 
Good. I know we talked about this a little bit Looking last episode, mm-hmm. but we recorded that 10 minutes ago. So, <laughs> you know, back to back to riding, back to running. It feels really good. <laughs> Beautiful here in Savannah. And you know, here we are, middle of April almost, and and wow. Time's flying. Mm. Gotta just keep doing the work, right? That's what they say. Keep moving it forward. Yep. So back to this horse ride. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, everybody knew who they were then, didn't they? Somebody was expecting the British, weren't they? Well, they were definitely expecting the British. And, you know, probably some of that stuff was true. They had to pass the word that, that they were coming. Um, so they were expected, but the I don't think the British were expecting too much of a revolt that night, right? That, that was the surprise. Yeah. And but if he hadn't been riding around on that horse, it didn't say how far he went. It's true. Well, <laughs> um, probably you can only get so far on a horse, especially when a lake's involved. I've heard stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, there you go. That's why water polo was a hard sport, right? Hard to make those, Peter, hard Peter. to teach those horses how to swim. Absolutely. It's a great poem, though. Oh, and it, it's, a, it's a long one, too. I, I, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we'll link to it in the show notes, as always. JKWpodcast.com. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, we all kind of had that vision in our mind that, the British are coming. The British are coming. What else have we been taught through the ages that we just take for granted? I just, oh yeah, teacher said it. It's probably it's true. Or pretty much most. The mentor it. said it, or that person said it. Must be true. Without without giving it a second thought. I don't so know little, how much. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, no, I w- uh, go ahead. I was, yeah. uh, I was going to save that pause, but you had something coming. Oh, I mean, I don't take as much at face value as I used to. I mean, I've learned a few things over the years that we, but I, when it's really bad, the government don't talk about it. We have to read about it later. That's a whole other. That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, I messed up your pause. Go no, no, no. Well, I was trying to come out of the pause because the pause was getting a little long. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I mean, it was. But you let them process that. Yeah. Um, I think right now every every guru was questioned about is about everything, and it's different people who question them. Um. And I guess it depends on the guru, doesn't it? Uh, but now I think we live in a society where we, well, I started to say we, we take almost nothing as true just because it was stated, which is, uh, I which guess is also a lack of critical thinking, which, Beg is pardon? Also, which is also a lack of critical thinking, by the way. Oh, right. Um, he said it, so it must not be true. Well, there, there is that's that that's also just as bad. And we have, yeah, you know, we are in a strange time in American society where, if you have a political identification, you must be incorrect because you are labeled, you, you have chosen a different political identity than. Mm-hmm. Than mine, uh, if you, if you are untrustworthy on one thing you said eight years ago, then you must be untrustworthy on everything you say now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are a middle class white Christian, you must be unworthy of telling me anything because of the privilege you've enjoyed your whole life. Mm. You know, those are also a lack of critical thinking. 
because you're not actually investigating the conversation. You're making a judgment from the person who's delivering it. That's right. Yeah. You know, I think I've we've told the Gandhi story, right? The Gandhi sugar story of yes. on this podcast. Yeah, Gandhi, you know, old lady or lady goes to Gandhi, says, Hey, can you tell my son to stop eating sugar? He says, Come back in two weeks. I traveled four hundred miles to come here. What are you talking about? I, I traveled for days. Two weeks she comes back. Gandhi looks at the kid, says, Stop eating sugar. I said, why did you make me come back after two weeks? I had to stop eating sugar. I was going to tell you, kid, to stop eating sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, well, Gandhi wanted to live in integrity with that recommendation to that child. Imagine from the child's perspective. What do you mean stop eating sugar? You get a whole pile of lollipops right there. You're enjoying it. Why can't I? You know, you're you're the leader of our nation, <laughs> and you're eating sugar. Why should I stop eating sugar? Maybe I could be a great leader. Leader one day. That's critical thinking. It's simplistic. Mm-hmm. It's you know the child's version of it, and we happen to be. As adults, and I imagine that most of our listeners are adults, at least in body and mind, you know, a little, yes, you childlike at heart. As you, tried, we, you tried to make me spit coffee out, didn't you? You did that on purpose. I did not. I was simply talking, and you picked up your coffee. You know better. <laughs> yes. Well. I assume most of our listeners are adults. And fully capable of more complex critical thinking. But, you know, it takes time and energy. It and we, does. Want, we want stuff now. Snap judgment. It does. And it's very difficult these days, in many cases, to find what the, what the reality is. Because, you know... You talked about that last podcast, I mean, on our last podcast about those guys who put out that uh, 700 pages of uh, postulate on, you know, two plus two equals four. In anything I have seen lately, for whatever argument there is that something works, there is an equal and opposite treatise on why it's a lie and both of them apparently knew those those mathematicians who could speak with such eloquence as to make their point absolutely believed so it's really hard and then when you get both of those now you got to say like i mean there's a lot of stuff out there like a small thing we're going to take the uh vaccine right now just, yep. just for grins and giggles, okay? I mean, you've got all these people over here telling us why it's good for you. And we have another set of equal experts over here going, this is why it's not good for you. This is why that other thing is a lie. And you go back and forth with people who reputedly have equal credentials, mm-hmm. diametrically opposed to the other person's position. What do you do with that? We also forget that it is possible for multiple things to be true at the same time. Right? <laughs> you want to stick with a COVID vaccine? Sometimes, for a yeah. If you want to stick with a COVID vaccine for a minute, let's, let's stick with a COVID, COVID vaccine for a minute. Mm-hmm. It seems to be true mm-hmm. that the vaccine variants that we're using in the U.S. right now are pretty good at preventing severe COVID. Mm -hmm. It is also true that some people are allergic to some of the ingredients in the vaccine and should not take the vaccine. Mm -hmm. 
And it's also true beyond that, that some of those people who don't take the vaccine because they're allergic or whatever will not get COVID or will not get a severe case of COVID. Mm-hmm. Huh. Both those things are true at the same time. Well, all three things, but yeah. But you can avoid a severe case of COVID by getting the vaccine. Mm -hmm. And you can avoid a severe case of COVID without the vaccine. Both those things can happen. Mm -hmm. There are also fad diet wars all the time. Yes, there are. But I'm sticking with my baby green spinach. You got a lot of people who say vegan is the only way to eat. Mm -hmm. Feel great. Doesn't kill animals. I'm assuming that none of those people get their vegetables from large farms where animals are run over by combines all the time. But you know, let's. Uh, and then there is the group that says keto is the only way. Mm-hmm. You burn fat, you feel great. Both those things can be true. The vegan diet can be great. And a keto diet can be great. And what we always said when I worked at the gym was, you know what routine is is the best one to do? It's whatever you'll stick to. If you will walk an hour a day, but you won't lift weights three times a week, then let's not put you on Lifting weights three times a week. Let's put you on walking an hour a day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. If you will eat vegan, let's put you on, let's put you on a vegan diet. If you won't eat vegan, let's not put you on a vegan diet because you're not going to stick to it. Let's put you on something you'll do. Let's put you on something healthy that you'll do. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And it can be true that this works and this works and something else works too. And they can all be true at the same time. Wow. That's correct. It makes it even more confusing. But still, there is such a plethora. And now now I know your point is uh, just taking things purely at face value, regardless of who says it without any thought whatsoever. But the process of going through the thought is not necessarily a simple one. It's true. It's true. And here's the thing about diets or something else. If something, if somebody is, is vehement and their defense of something, Mm -hmm. It is likely that one of two things is true. <laughs> one is, one of those things is that they've benefited greatly from this thing, and they think everybody should try it. Mm-hmm. The other thing is they have something to gain by you trying it out. Mm-hmm. Hey, vegan diet is great. I think you should definitely try it. And in order to help Make sure you get enough protein and enough iron in your diet. I have these these green smoothies from this company, and you should buy them from me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see what you're doing. Critical thinking. Yeah, but that doesn't make that other thing invalid. No. You know. I'm just saying if somebody's – I mean, that's like saying – Somebody's saying something – vehemently look to see what they have to gain from it. Well, I mean, I know people who were speaking vehemently about the vaccine to me that they're not going to get anything from when I say no. Well, (laughs) so that's not true though. Take a, take a look a little deeper. I think anybody who can get vaccinated should be vaccinated because I think that the vaccine is showing Mm -hmm. that 
I think the more people who get vaccinated, the quicker we get the world open. Mm -hmm. And that benefits me. You don't go very many places anyway. (laughs) But I have a niece who can't go to school or who has to keep going to different schools because they shut – they do remote schooling Mm -hmm. in a lot of places. And we finally found one that, uh, you know, that that's open all the time. Mm. It's a private school. So they pay for it. It'd be nice if they didn't have to pay for school, but public schools remote half the time. Mm. If we got all the school workers vaccinated and most of the parents vaccinated and kids could all go to school fine. (laughs) And that would greatly help our family. <laughs> so yeah, people do have, you know, they may not have direct obvious monetary reasons for a vehement defense mm. of something, but there might be something underlying that you're not thinking about. It goes both ways. Yeah. Some people think you shouldn't get vaccinated because there's no need. Some people think you shouldn't get vaccinated because they think that Bill Gates put a chip in it and is going to be monitoring. Oh, I'm not going for the chip theory. (laughs) (laughs) Can't go for the chip theory. (laughs) But I don't hear you pitching. I don't hear you with a vehement pitch for nobody getting vaccinated. I hear you saying you don't want to. Mm Mm-hmm. My 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 personal choice based on me. Right. Yep. So. But I, uh, I mean, but there are other things. I mean, there are things we all believe in, and believe. Mm-hmm. And I think most of us believe something. <laughs> as long as, and I have no, I take no issue with most people's beliefs as long as they're backed by some critical thinking. Hmm. And sometimes there is no, sometimes all the critical thinking you do, you can't back something up and you just believe anyway. And hopefully you can just admit to yourself when that's the case. And I'm talking about you in general, not yeah, not you, Kelvin. Absolutely. That that's the case. Um, there are lots of people with faith in a supreme being. I'm one of them. I have no proof of God. I've never had a one-on-one conversation with with a deity in in real life, not in a dream state or not in a prayer state. You know, mm-hmm. God never knocked on my door and said, "Hey, let's have a chat." I never. You sure he wasn't informing a little girl with the cookies? Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I am in the town where Girl Scouts was, was invented. Oh well, there you go. <clears throat> there you go. So I have to admit to myself when I thank God for another beautiful day that I, I don't I don't have any any good critically thought out reason. To believe in God, I just do. I understand that that might sound crazy to some people. (laughs) But you just believe it because you believe it? Mm, Yeah, kind of. Kind of, yeah. But we take a lot of things on faith. Cars are going to stop at red lights. Yes. (laughs) We take that on faith. And and, And stay on their side of the line. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so but this goes back to the to the critical thinking thing like have you actually thought about it is a, exactly and i think that is a point that you're making more than anything else yeah that, that really is so, sure that you're- so many things we accept just on face value without yeah. having thought about it at all exactly 
And which one of my conversations has always been when you and when you get into a conversation with someone and and maybe you said this at the beginning and all they can do is argue about it and get mad. Um, if they've thought about it and they have a belief, there's no reason to get angry. Right. So my experience is if they're really that adamant and 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 just crazy about it, it's like they haven't really examined it for themselves because if they had and they were satisfied with it, they would know in their in their heart, you know, that they right, no reason for you, no no reason to be angry at you just because you don't subscribe to that belief. And you can have a conversation with people with a person who believes differently than you do, but they have had that critical thinking. And you can talk about the pluses and minuses of your your different beliefs and stuff. But if all they've got is something somebody handed it handed to them and they accepted it at face value, mm-hmm. they can't have a conversation. All they can do is fight for it. That's right. So and we do too much fighting without the thinking. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <clears throat> too much fighting without the thinking. So So that's uh it's it's all right. So the question is have you thought about it real? Have you examined your some of the things that you take for granted? Some of the things that you tell people about every day. Are well, you thinking pretty- about it? Are you really, really thinking about it? That's it. And that, my friends, is the question. Yeah. Let's raise a raise a cup of coffee to critical thinking. <laughs> Here Cheers, <it> sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. Show notes and more at jkwdpodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe, leave a review, and share with your friends. And we will see you next week. Bye. A Better Humanhood Production.